Welcome to St Peter's Cemetery, Dalbeth, as we commemorate the final resting place of the great Johnny Campbell, this beautifully restored headstone, which was done by Danny Rooney. Now we always say that the most important people at any ceremony are the family, and that is especially true today, as the Campbell family have given us not only the Celtic legend Johnny Campbell, but also his son Jack Campbell, who was Secretary of the Polish Relief Fund in Glasgow during the Second World War, and he was also President of the Scottish Polish Society. No wonder then that when Celtic legend Johnny Campbell died, his coffin was carried to the graveside by Polish soldiers, and the President of Poland sent his sympathies. It's a remarkable story, and we're deeply honoured to have with us today the Vice Consulate of Poland, Tomasz Tadia. Tomasz. As well as members of the Polska number one Celtic Supporters Club, I'd just like us to give the Campbell family and the Polish connection a very warm welcome. <laughs> Today's first speaker is Tony Hamilton, Chief Executive of the Celtic Foundation and a great friend of the society. Tony has stepped in for Celtic Chief Executive Peter Lawwell, who's had to attend to a very busy schedule with a new signing at the park this morning. <laughs> but Peter sends everyone his very best wishes today. No pressure, Tony. <laughs> Next is Jim Craig, Lisbon Lion and Celtic Grave Society patron. Now, if any new player wanted to know what being a Celtic player really means and what being a Celtic supporter really means, Jim Craig is the man to ask. Then if David Potter, the author of around 20 Celtic books, it goes up every time we, we have you here, David. <laughs> and an authority on the era in which Johnny Campbell played. To mark the Polish connection, we have Greg Karwowski from the Polska number one Celtic Supporters Club to say a few words. The first time I met Greg was at a Celtic Graves event five years ago when he placed a Poland scarf amongst the Celtic scarves on the grave of Celtic player David Hamilton. So there's no better Polish shelf to speak today. We then have Chris Curry to speak on behalf of the family. We then ask Father Tom White to conduct the blessing of the grave. We're particularly honoured that Father Tom can attend today as this is the 173rd anniversary of the parish of St Mary's, the birthplace of Celtic Football Club. We then take the chance to lay some flowers in the grave. We have a couple of short presentations to make and then we close the ceremony with some words of thanks and get some pictures taken. Ladies and gentlemen, the mark of any great player is a man who can win medals wherever he plays and can score goals from every position at the highest level with three different teams. And that man is Johnny Campbell. He scored the first ever goal at Villa Park, the first ever goal at St James's Park, and he scored every other goal at Celtic Park. He won three league titles and two Scottish Cups at Celtic, two league titles in an FA Cup with Aston Villa, and when he went to Third Lanark, he won another league title and scored the winner in the Glasgow Cup final against, of course, Celtic. <laughs> but his proudest moment, I'd like to think, was as a 19-year-old, when he scored two goals, as Celtic won the Scottish Cup in 1892 with the very first great Celtic team. This season, the Celtic Grave Society hope to locate, mark or restore the final resting places of all the members of the great 1892 Celtic team. And Johnny would take great pride to know that five of that team lie at rest within this cemetery. Goalkeeper Joe Cullen, fullback Stan Doyle and Jerry Reynolds and also Johnny's great friend Sandy McMahon who he formed a lethal left wing partnership. It's funny, just right over there. Even in death, they could not be kept apart. Johnny may have missed out on wearing the hoops as the Celtic stripes he played in changed immediately after his departure, but there's no shadow of doubt. Johnny Campbell was one of the best players ever to wear a Celtic jersey. I'd like to ask what happened to Sergio. Thanks, Brendan. Morning, everybody, or good afternoon now. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to offer apologies on behalf of Peter Lawwell. Uh, 
they asked me to stand in for him this morning. Uh, I've no idea what he's doing in the middle of the transfer window, why he can't be here, but I'm sure he's got a big smile on his face while he's doing it. Uh, I'd also like to add the club's welcome to the Campbell family. I think that's one of the things that, that uh, we're particularly proud of around Celtic Graves, that it brings back families to Celtic, and we're, we're really, really happy that the Campbell family are represented uh, here with us today. I'd also like to welcome the Polish consulate, Thomas Tadia. Uh, we hope you can stay with us today, Thomas, and uh, enjoy a day at Celtic Park. The Polska number one uh, are represented here, which is fantastic. And uh, our thanks uh, to Aston Villa, who have sent some flowers for this Celtic Grave Society event. And a, a welcome as well to the representatives from Third Lanark, who are here today uh, at St Peter's. It's, it's actually quite strange being here today. I think I've been at 20 of the 23 or 24 Celtic Graves events, and this is the first one that it's not been raining at. So, uh, it's, it's absolutely remarkable. We're very proud of, of Celtic Graves Society at the, at the football club, and we have been for the for the last five years. They're, they're great ambassadors for for Celtic and they, they keep our history and our heritage alive. We're proud to have worked with them uh, at St Mary's uh, on the 125th anniversary at the club which was in November 2012 and we're continually working with them around these events and various other things so coming up in a few weeks it's the 30th anniversary of the, the death of uh, Celtic's greatest ever manager Jock Steen and there's, there'll be some celebrations and commemorations uh, around that as well. <coughs> But the founding of this football club and how it came about is, is, what, is what sets us apart, I think. There was a need in Victorian Britain at the end of the 19th century. And, you know, life has moved on for many people, but that, but that need still exists. So we try and address that now through Celtic FC Foundation. We're interested in taking people further away from poverty. And I think that's, that's only one aspect of what we do at Celtic. I think another aspect is, is clearly that we play football and it's the reason that we're, we're here today. But one of the most important ones for me and for the football club in general is that we have we have Celtic Grave Society and we have these guys working tirelessly in their own time uh, to keep the founding fathers and significant players like Johnny Campbell uh, in our thoughts and in our mind and uh, it's a big part of who we are. So. On behalf of Celtic, just thank you for having us uh, and, and thank you for coming here today. Thank you. Reverend Father, ladies and gentlemen, in my own playing career, I've, I was occasionally a centre half, but most of the time I was a right back, right from when I was a wee boy. I used to get a chance occasionally to play up front, but then we lose a goal at the back and you'd be brought back again to stuffing up the defence. So on a Saturday, and even when I was playing professionally, when the team, the opposing team was right out, the name of the outside left was the most important name for me to think about because that was a man who made or broke my day, depending on how I did against him. So outside lefts are not always my favourite people, but I'm going to make an exception in the case of John Campbell because he played for the right team. And that's a fact. It's often said that the Celtic the beginnings of Celtic, a fairy story. And you can make out a good case for that. I mean, just think of the, the basic facts. Hibs won the cup in uh, February 1887. They're fetid along at St Mary's Hall here. Their secretary says to the people gathered who came from the West, why don't you start a summer club to Hibs in the West? You think about it during the summer. They call a meeting in November 1887 and decide the club's going to go ahead. And then, and you must remember this is Scotland, by the way, we've had the most awful summer. We might have had a bad winter then as well, but between the 6th of November 1887 and the 8th of May 1888, they built this stadium, which was, by the standards of the time, a very impressive stadium. It was a remarkable piece of work. And they also got players in all during this period and beyond as well. Johnny Campbell himself came in, came in in 1890 and that was a very important time for Celtic because they had started playing the Scottish Cup in 1888-89, got to the final in that particular year. 
didn't do so well the following year. They've won their first trophy in 1891, the Glasgow Cup. But what they, ne they really needed was to get their hands on one of the major trophies, which at the time were the Scottish Cup and the league. Now John came in in 1890, as did Sandy Duke McMahon, and the two of them gelled very, very well. And from that moment on, just everything seemed to go right for Celtic. They won the Cup in 1892, they won the league in 1893-94. Unfortunately, just after that, Johnny went down south to Aston Villa for reasons that we can guess at, but we don't really know the, the truth of the story. But great, he came back again and was there for the, the League One of 1898 and the Scottish Cup wins 1899-1900. So it, it was an excellent time for him to be there. His goal-scoring record is remarkable for an outside left. The outside lefts and outside rights of those days, their main job was to get to the byline and cut the ball back for the glory boys, the centre forwards, and knock the ball in the back of the net. But from Johnny's record of 109 goals in 215 matches, he must have been much more than that. And I'm tempted to read into it, although I don't know for sure, but I'm tempted to read into it that he was a right-footed outside left playing in that position because if you're a left-footed player, you go to the byline and cut the ball back. If you're a right-sided player, although that is part of your job, there's also the temptation to cut in and goal and get it on your good right foot and have a crack yourself. And from 109 goals in 215 games, which is a goal every two games, I would think that he did that, and that was a great strength of his game. He was a great self, there is no doubt about that. <clears throat> I'm very pleased to see members of the Campbell family here today, and on behalf of uh, <coughs> Celtic fans throughout the world, I would like, first of all, to congratulate them on having such a distinguished ancestor, and secondly, to thank them for giving Celtic such a great player. Thank you. Well, there's no doubt about it that uh, John Campbell was one of the best players of 1890s Scotland. As Jim said, he won the first Scottish Cup for Celtic in 1892, uh, which was a great thing for the infant club and then they won the Scottish League the next two years 1895 not quite so good and it was said by Willie Mealy that Campbell left Celtic because of the rather foolish actions of a prominent committee man what that means we do not know but uh, Celtic's loss was Aston Villa's gain because he went to Aston Villa, he won the league in his first season, became the top goal scorer, and then in 1897, Aston Villa actually won the English League and the English Cup on the same day. They beat Everton 3-2 in the final at Crystal Palace, and when they came off the field, they discovered that I think it was Derby County who'd lost to Sheffield United or somebody, to Bury in fact it was, and this meant that Aston Villa were the league champions as well as the cup winners, and it all happened on the same day. But very soon after that, that was the 10th of April, by the 1st of May, Johnny Campbell was back with Celtic. And the reason, of course, was that Willie Mealy, at the start of April 1897, had been appointed manager. And Willie Mealy was no fool. Willie Mealy knew what a good football player was, and John Campbell was on his way back. He had never really left Celtic, and uh, he was the best man at Sandy McMahon's wedding in 1896. And this must be unique in world history, where the groom has very recently won a Scottish League medal and the best man has very recently won an English League medal. <laughs> this was 1896 and I doubt whether this can be paralleled in world football history. Um, several other things I'd like to say about um, uh, Sandy McMahon, several more unusual things, uh, particularly with the Third Lanark people here, and it was mentioned that uh, uh, Johnny Campbell scored the goal for Third Lanark that beat Celtic in the Glasgow Cup final, uh, and uh, it is reported that it's a shot that wriggled through the wet, gloved hands of Davy Adams and over the line. And for Celtic players, it says, thick gloom shadowed their features. Um, he was the first man to score a goal at St James's Park, the first man to score a goal at Villa Park. He was also the first man to score a goal 
for Celtic at the new Celtic Park in the first game they played there on August the 20th, 1892. He wasn't the first goal scorer because Renton had scored first, but he equalised and he was the first man <coughs> to score for Celtic. Some reports say that he went on to score all the rest of the goals. Celtic won 4-3 that day and some reports say that he scored all four, but then again the, Vic the Victorian newspaper reporting is not an exact science. <coughs> Uh, his other great game at Celtic Park, of course, was the Rosebery International of 1900, when R.S. McCall scored the hat-trick, but Johnny Campbell uh, played well uh, also. And uh, this was a great uh, win for Scotland over England in 1900, and uh, Johnny Campbell contributed a lot more to that particular international than Lord Rosebery did. Lord Rosebery tried his best to be Scottish, that day and he stood on the old pavilion at Celtic Park and said things like oh hi and michty me and to prove that he was Scottish uh, but in fact it was people like uh, Johnny Campbell and R.S. McCall that did the job for uh, Celtic on that, for Scotland rather, on that day. But Johnny Campbell did great for uh, Celtic, Aston Villa, Third Lanark and Scotland and frankly is one of the greatest players of them all. My name is Greg Nervovsky, I represent uh, Polska number one Celtic supporters club. Uh, it's indeed a very special special occasion for us and for all Polish community in Scotland and in Glasgow as well. Up till now, Poland <coughs> and Celtic, most of it I was associated with uh, Jackie Jekanowski, Dariusz Dovczyk, Magic Zurawski and Artur Boruc. That was the first names that come up when you find Celtic and Poland. Not many people know that we actually had a Conrad Kapler, Celtic player uh, from Poland, who played for Celtic in 1947 and was spotted when he played for Polish Army. And he's been signed. We need to remember that now we have a special John Campbell and his family. It's a it's a absolutely outstanding in new link between Poland and Scotland and Celtic Football Club. When 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 there was a war, second war, second war, first war and earlier on, Paul, Scots, Irish, they always walk shoulder in shoulder. But fighting in conflict is one thing, but to make your living every day in foreign country, that's a different story. And it was person like Jack Campbell, John's son, who stood for Polish people after uh, and during the war, who was brave to say what's happening in Eastern Europe and in Poland. And at the time, no many people want to do it because it wasn't very popular. Because communist propaganda, we can, can easily say they, they are as good as they record. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when we find out about this event, we are absolutely shocked and delighted when Celtic Graves contact us about that. Now we have a big, big Polish community in here in Scotland, but not many people know that we had a big Scottish community in Poland as well, and it's back to actually a 15th century. It's actually a, a place, a small village in Poland called Scotland, yeah. named after Scottish settlers who moved in there. Scottish, Irish and Polish people that always have a good bond. Some people will say the most, most probably reason was a uh, religion. Yeah, it was one of the factors. But I think that the nature of us, the nature of the nations who are always fighting for their freedom, who are always looking for a better life for their relatives, that was, was our real bond. And that's what we really need to remember about. And Neil Lennon famously said that uh, this is not the end, it's just the beginning. And today event, it's not the end for Polska number one CSC and John Campbell. It's just the beginning to discover a, a new pages of a book. Last couple of days I spent absolutely fantastic time when I was digging through all the archives and books, trying to find a new facts in the history, it's just exploring. So I'm sure the Celtic Graves will Polska number one and Celtic Graves and Campbell's family will keep working on that project because I'm sure there's more more and more to discover.
Uh, at the end, I would like to thank uh, Celtic Graves again. I would like to encourage everybody to support them because it's a guy's doing a fantastic job. We need to we need to make sure that rem we remember our history because those who don't remember history, they know have and they don't really deserve in the future. So thanks a lot again for coming along, folks. It's a special night. Sorry for me being nervous, but I'm really emotional. Real emotion day for us. Thank you. Can I, can I, sorry, I forgot about something. I was going to write it down, but I forgot. Uh, we had a small, small gift for for Campbell's family, which I would like to present if I can do it right now. Yes, yes. So, what we got is Polish, Polish National League Football jersey. Uh, when Poland and Polish people were in here, we can compare them to army. They were actually army. But we, using the football terminology, you can say that they were a, a football team playing very, very far away from home. Not as far as the Kazakhstan or the Azerbaijan, <laughs> but still far away. And same as Celtic got their supporters following everywhere. We got John Campbell and his family, who were Polska number, Polska and Polish community, 12 men, 12 men and the best supporter they could easily, they could ever imagine. On this occasion, we prepared that football jersey with Polish National League football jersey, and it's Campbell family. <laughs> so if I can please always do uh, there you go. There you go. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Too sure whether to change and put this on just now, guys. <laughs> It'll be okay. It's quite an emotional day for the Campbell family, actually. I don't know whether you realise, but uh, my parents are buried here as well. My mum and my dad, my uncle and my aunt, and of course the big man himself, Johnny Campbell. Uh, it is a really big day for us. And before I go on to just talk about the influence that my grandfather had on me, I wouldn't mind just taking the opportunity to thank, on behalf of the family, the Celtic Grave Society for what you've done. This is just incredible. The research, the fact that you've pulled so many people together is a fantastic job. And the improvement you've made actually to the gravestone is terrific. So from the family, the Campbells, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. you get some more members as well. Hopefully so. Yeah, okay. Um, my grandfather, who I didn't meet because he died before I was in this world, but he had a fantastic influence on me. Uh, the person, obviously, I heard an awful lot about, about him from was my mother at the end of the day, i.e. his daughter. Um, that made a big impact on, on my life as far as I'm concerned, and my family know I'm a fanatic as far as Celtic is concerned and have been from a very young age. Um, we've got media now all the time where we hear everything about football, whether it's Sky Sports News, the internet, you name it. But when I was a youngster, you didn't hear much about it at all. And the only time I ever heard about football was from, from my mother. Uh, I went to my first Celtic game with my brother, Paul, who's been significant in helping pull this event together. And we went to see Celtic and Stirling Albion, if you remember that, Paul. And uh, they were throwing an awful lot of bottles on that day as well. And it was a kind of funny event after all the things I heard about how much my grandfather loved the game and what he did for it and everything like that. And again, football wasn't necessarily a priority when I was a youngster at school. Uh, there was a hatred for Rangers, I hate to say, but there was. 
and a love for Celtic, but that was about it. Most of the time at school we seemed to fight to see who was the best fighter at school, which is weird, but things have changed an awful lot since then. And, and even at secondary school, uh, I remember the, the teachers asking us what we wanted to do when we left school. And the one thing I wanted to do at 14 was to play for Celtic. And I bet there's loads of people here that wanted the same thing. Oh, sorry, the second thing I wanted to do was to be the first president of Scotland. <laughs> yes, I am a loony. Um, but the thing I miss in all of this is the fact that I never met my grandfather. When I re read all about him over the years, he was just a fantastic guy in terms of what he did on the pitch, and we've heard that from you guys. He delivered the goods at the end of the day. And uh, even this morning when I was out walking at five o'clock in the morning on one of these nutcases that goes out dead early every morning for a walk, I just wished I could ask him what motivated him, what really excited him about playing for Celtic and delivering the goods and the championships and everything else. And to this day it still goes through my head all the time. I wish he was there so I could talk to him and just find out more how he felt about it and winning all those medals. And, and to me, he was the guy, from what my mother told me, that made me the Celtic supporter I am today. And I still try to get to games when I can. I live down south, I try and come up for games now and again. One of the reasons that we wanted to move back to Scotland was for Celtic. And that's down to Johnny Campbell. It really is, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm extraordinarily proud, and the family are as well, of being here today to support this. It's just a fantastic event, and for so many of you to turn up, and, and, and acknowledge and respect what a great player this guy was. So I just want to take this opportunity of thanking everybody for, for everything that you've done. Johnny left a great family behind him, 10 children that he contributed to bringing up. They had a great education. They went on to do great jobs. Loads of them were solicitors, if I remember rightly. Uh, Jack was a, a great solicitor who fought strongly for the Polish community. And lots of the other family members were committed as well to helping the community. Lots of them did volunteer work. And to some extent, that ethos has carried on within the family. Because I know my brother, my sisters and others have all done voluntary work to help those in need. And again, I think that's where that came from. It came from Celtic, it came from Johnny Campbell. Because what they were about at that point when Celtic kicked off was about helping the community, dealing with poverty unemployment, housing, all those kind of things. And that ethos has worked its way through the family to date. We still all feel the same. And certainly a lot of the jobs that I've done over the years, I've been working in uh, voluntary sector bodies about helping people that need support. So again, I think that's come from this man. So not only did he deliver on the, on, on the park, but he's influenced the whole family in helping those communities and as I say, the Polish community and others. So it's a big thanks from me to him and to everybody else and to my mum. Uh, and a big, a big thanks from the family to everybody here today. So thank you very much. Chris Corrine, on behalf of the family. We just ask uh, Father Tom White now to conduct the blessing. <coughs> Very good afternoon. Welcome to St Peter's Cemetery on behalf of the whole people of the Archdiocese of Glasgow who purchased this plot of land to be a sacred place where we literally bury our treasures, our loved one. I think it's quite an immediate point with the Campbell family when you say, this is a grandfather, here are mums and dads, <coughs> here are lots of people who are precious to us. In fact, Johnny's grave is literally just a row away from my grandparents' grave. So every time I come to St Peter's, I'm mindful of how precious this place is to many. I'd like to thank the Celtic Grave Society for phoning me 
always get John or Brendan and I know they're after a favour but I don't mind that because I know I'll be able to ask them for a favour every now and again too. I suppose as the parish priest of St Mary's I am a representative or an embodiment of that community which still I would say thrives today but still in adverse circumstances. The community founded in the Calton which founded St Celtic Football Club were facing the adversity of poverty. The postcode which the St Mary's enjoys in 2004 had a life expectancy less than people in Baghdad. 53 is the average life expectancy of those who live in that part of our city. And one weekend, I gathered from my back garden 68 syringes. So the poverty is still very real in our city. And that's why I'm equally delighted to welcome Tony Hamilton, the Chief Executive of the Celtic Foundation, because in tangible ways they're still making a difference to our community in the East End and beyond. I see the work they do in benefiting the School of St Anne's in St Mary's Parish. So we're all gathered here today. <coughs> Glasgow is a city founded by St Kentigern <coughs> or St Mungo as we was more popularly known. And St Mungo, I once heard it described and I say this in relation to welcoming the Polish community here today because all too often we forget that the, the, the vast different diaspora that make up Glasgow that's whether it be the Irish community, the Polish community, the Lithuanian community. And that's why I often describe us Glaswegians as we're all Mungo's mongrels. <laughs> <laughs> we all come from different places to make up a rich tapestry of pattern which makes up Glasgow. But sometimes we can often forget the clannishness of the Scots mentality. And we can often forget that we often can be guilty of not making people welcome in our city. And that leaves us with a challenge to have open hearts and open minds to all welcome people. <coughs> because it's no secret that those who find themselves of the Irish heritage are never welcome here. St Mary's was founded in this day on the 15th of August. It was opened. And it was opened today because it's a feast day assumption and that was what the church was to be dedicated to our ladies but it came as a surprise to the folk of Glasgow because St Mary's was built under a theatre license because the experience was as quickly as they were building St Andrew's Chapel in the Clyde it was being torn down because we were not wanted we were told if we don't know our past so rightly told we don't know our past, we almost don't deserve our future. And so we need to be mindful of that past, not to be bitter, but for us to be ambassadors of something different, of something great. And that's what the founding fathers of Celtic wanted to do. They wanted to make a real difference. But it was rooted too in faith. And that's why, quite symbolically, we're gathered under this beautiful cross. Because that is a symbol of the Lord. A man who came amongst his own people and wasn't he welcome. But a man who is brave enough to take salvation to every end of the earth. And when Johnny was buried here, he was buried here as part of a ceremony of faith. And that's why, as people of faith, we turn again to Christ our Lord. Because we believe for Johnny, life has changed, it's not ended but we're left to carry on the legacy of the Founding Fathers. So in blessing, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. <coughs> Dear friends, we listen to Psalm number 24, and the response says, Lord, make me know your ways, teach me your paths. Lord, make me know your ways, teach me your paths. Make me walk in truth and teach me, for you are our God and Saviour. 
In you I hope all day long, because of your goodness, O Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your path. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his ways to the poor. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. History is a very important one to us. I was in the Holy Land and I keep occasionally water from the Jordan River where the Lord was baptised. And so we sprinkle this grave anew with water from the River Jordan, recalling the one who walked on the earth, bringing good news to all. Let us pray. God our Father, Send your only angel to watch over this grave, as we remember Johnny and all those who are buried here in this place. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, may this cross be a sign of hope for all who gaze here. May their hearts find strength and courage to do well the way, the truth and the life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Jesus taught, we pray. Our Father, Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, the light perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and souls all We're mindful today being the solemnity of the Assumption, we pray to our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed is thou thy womb, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, forgive us sins now and ever. We ask God's blessing in each of us here. I want to be mindful of family and friends who are not here either. Those who have asked for our prayers, we just spend a moment. For the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and each one of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> one hoops. <laughs> <laughs>
make small presentations. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Celtic Grave Society would also like to show our appreciation to Father Tom White from the parish of St Mary's Calton. And we'd like to mark the 173rd anniversary of that parish with a small presentation. There's a couple of prints from the Catholic Observer in 1895, yeah, the first two priests of the parish, and also it's a, it's a history of the parish as well, from 1895. Thank you very much. Just got one more small presentation to make as well. Since our inception five years ago, there's been one constant at every ceremony, and that's the dapper figure of 82-year-old young Thomas Kelly Donnelly, the man in the hat here. <laughs> Tommy is Celtic through and through, with a pedigree that we can only aspire to. Tommy, I asked you earlier on, what keeps you going so strong? And you said... Celtic. You didn't say that. You said brandy. <laughs> but Tommy, we the Celtic Grave Society would like to ask you to become our ambassador and we'd like to present you with a small token of our appreciation. It's no brandy. <laughs> it's an engraved uh, plaque. Yeah, <laughs> Just in closing, we'd like to thank everyone for attending. I think everyone who's been to most of the Celtic Grave Society events will see that everyone is special in its own way, but today is particularly special. And I think it's down really to the family, the Celtic and the Polish connection. So we'd like to thank everyone from the bottom of our hearts. If anyone would still like to avail themselves of a, a booklet, uh, we've got our glamorous salesman here. <laughs> they knew I was going to say that because I say it every time. <coughs> Kev and Paul. Going to be Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thanks very much.
time to 